Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bobby Bo Show. Today I have a very nice game from the last Bobby Bo Jangles Viewer Arena, played by myself and the cool guy 0917 on chess.com. As always, I start with e4 and Mr. Guy responds with e6, the French defense. I play f4, because I always play the king's gambit, but after d5, e5, and c5, we have the French advance opening where the center is going to be closed and we're going to fight for control of the d4 square. Now I played c3 to prepare d4, and now we have knight c6 attacking d4. Now knight f3 defending d4. And now we have knight h6. Black wants to put his knight on f5 where it will add an attacker to d4. So here I play bishop to d3 to prevent the knight from coming to f5. This move indirectly defends d4. Now bishop to e7 preparing to castle. I move the bishop back to c2 so that I can push d4. And now queen to c6. This puts the queen in line with the d4 square and also attacks the b2 square if the bishop ever comes out. Now I play d4 to support my control of the center. We have captures, captures, and this opens up the diagonal for black's bishop. Now black could castle here, but instead they play f6 because that's how chess works. If you play the French defense, you have to play f6. Now we have castles, castles, followed by the first mistake of the game, b3. The best move would have been knight to c3, because now the knight can come to e2, where it defends d4. But instead, after captures captures, now black can capture the knight on f3. And you have to take back with the pawn here, because the knight is coming in to capture on d4. And now we have a discovered check that's going to look pretty brutal. And the king is ripped wide open. There's no more king safety. You lost control of the center. This is just a bad position for white. However, instead of capturing on f5, black decides to finally bring the knight in because now the rook defends it and after I capture the knight, he can take back with the rook. Where instead if he took with the pawn, this would ruin his control of the center and just put him in a worse position. So now he can finally bring the knight in, but I capture capture, giving up a bishop. So now he has the bishop pair and his rook is lifted, but it's still a pretty even game. Now finally knight to c3 and then bishop to d7 and queen to d3. The best move here would have been knight to e2, adding another defender to the d4 square. The queen isn't really doing anything useful on d3, and it's now on a dangerous diagonal with the rook. Here black decides to double the rooks, but once again he could have captured on f3, because this is still a weakness. If you remove the knight, you remove the defender of the d4 square, and white's position starts to fall apart. Now bishop to e3 defending the d4 square, and knight to b4. This attacks my queen, but it's removing an attacker from d4. And after I move my queen back, the knight's just poorly placed, so it's going to have to go back. Now the knight needs to come to e2 to add another defender to the d4 square. But after rook to b1, the bishop can now come down and pin my knight to my queen, preventing me from adding another defender to d4. Now queen to d3 breaking the pin, and here black goes for queen to a5. And this fails to build on the advantage that black's been building up this entire game. Black's only inactive piece here is the light squared bishop. To activate the bishop, you have to bring it back to e8, where it then can come out here on the king side and be on a strong diagonal and control a lot of squares and threaten my poorly placed pieces. But instead we have queen to a5. And now bishop to d2, supporting the knight. But this is a mistake because black can still bring the bishop out to e8 and then bring it out to the king side and activate it. But instead he goes for knight to e7. This helps to activate the bishop because it allows it to come out to b5, but it deactivates the knight and now black has no more attackers on d4. Now a4 and b5 and a captures b5. Black wants to play bishop to b5 so that he can skewer my queen and my rook. But right now my knight prevents that from happening. So we have captures, captures, and now bishop captures b5 and now even though he skewers my queen and my rook i have one move that secures a major advantage so feel free to pause the video and find the winning move while i'll give you a couple of seconds for those of you that were able to do it congratulations as this is the position from the thumbnail and for those of you that just want to enjoy the show it's queen captures f5 and at this point the best continuation for black is captures captures, 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 and now white is up a full piece and will probably go on to win the game. 
But instead, we have queen captures c3, trying to keep the queens on the board, but it's too late for black because white has another move that secures the win, and that's queen captures e6 check. Now there's not much black can do, but he tries to block with the rook, and after knight to g5, white has three attackers on the rook, and there's not much that can be done. So finally, we have black deciding to go and capture d4, winning the French defense, but surrendering the game because the king is headed for the guillotine, and there's no way to defend the f7 square. After king to h1, black takes a rook, but it's no use because queen captures f7, and it's in this position on move 27 that black resigned the game, because after king to h8, queen to f8, knight to g8, we have knight to f7, checkmate, and that's a smothered checkmate, winning the game for white. So that's the game, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to play in the arenas, make sure to subscribe with notifications on, so that you know when I'm live. All links are in the description. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you again soon. Have an excellent rest of your day.